Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the video lecture on lists, stacks, queues and priority queues. This is the topic of chapter number 20 of our textbook. Alright, so in this video we're going to be looking uh, into these following objectives. We're going to explore the relationship between interfaces and classes in the Java Collections framework. We're going to be looking at common methods defined in the collection interface. We're going to be looking at the inter iterator interface and how to traverse elements with this interface and using for each loop. We're going to be looking at array list and linked list classes and the, the difference between them. Also, we're going to be looking at comparable and comparator interface and uh, see the difference between these two classes. Uh, we're going to briefly look into vector array list classes and differences between them and how to use this stack class for creating stacks and last lastly we're going to be looking at the relationship among collection queue linked list and priority queue uh, classes so we are starting our journey into the data structures why do we need data structures it's very important to understand why we need these data structures well a data structure is a collection of data organized in some fashion data structure doesn't only store the data in some certain fashion, but also uh, provides some operations for accessing and manipulating data, the data. So all of these data structures hold many, many elements uh, in, in themselves, but when it comes to uh, manipulating them, all of them are different. So we need to understand what kind of data structure is best for some certain particular task. And when we understand uh, what kind of data structure we need in some certain situation, we're going to be able to build more, uh, perform like more efficient software, more efficient programs. So Java provides these classes uh, called, so you can see these classes in this diagram here. This is the relationship of classes in Java Collections framework. So on the left side we can see interfaces, collection, set, list, queue, deck, sorted, set, navigable, set. In the middle we can see abstract classes. These abstract classes are also called convenience abstract classes because they provide uh, partial implementation for the interfaces. And on the right side we can see concrete classes. These are the classes we can use uh, these are already, I mean, concrete classes, we can use them in our programs. So this is the relationship uh, in the Java Collections framework. Now, <clears throat> these, are, these classes are not the only classes in Java Collections framework. Java Collections framework also contains maps. We're going to be studying maps in our uh, next video, video lecture. So let's first look at uh, the concrete classes and uh, what these classes are. So we can see that some of the classes are sets. Tree set, hash set and linked hash set. Set is a data structure that contains non-duplicate elements or unique elements. The elements in this data structure does not do not repeat. Okay, they are unique. And then we have uh, array list, linked list, vector stacked, hash, uh, priority queue. The elements in these data structures can repeat. They can contain repeating elements and it's like preserves the order in which you insert the elements into these um, containers. Yeah, we, we also call the da these data structures containers because they contain the collection of some elements, the group of elements. The sets do not preserve the order. Uh, when you add the elements into this set, uh, you're not guaranteed that the order is preserved. Uh, the difference between the list, list stacks, queues, and priority queues is this. So list is the list classes are array list and linked list. Basically, they just store the ordered collection of elements and they provide you the the, the methods. Also vector is considered as, as a list because it's very similar to array list. 
stacks are kind of like lists but they have some certain methods that allow you to process the data in some certain fashion so these uh, the stacks use the last in first out kind of way of storing and accessing data so the first element you put into the stack is going to be the last element you take out of the stack it's like a box uh, containing books okay when you put your books into the box uh, the, la the last book you put is going to be on on top of this box so it's going to be the first element you take and the first element you put into the box is going to be the last element you take queues are so in this uh, diagram we, we can see that there are no queues but we can use linked list to simulate queues we don't have a separate uh, concrete class for queues but we can use linked list as queues we're going to be looking at uh, later in a moment uh, the, so the queues are also like um, they're like stacks but they have these first in first out order the first element you put into the queue is going to be the first element that you take out of the queue it's just like you, the queue at uh, in the at the dining dining hall yeah the first student that goes takes the meal is going to be the first student who pays for the meal and who's going to start the meal first and the last uh, data structure is priority queue priority queue is a queue where the order in the queue is depending dependent on the priority so for example it can be uh, let's say when you're in a bank and there are some people who participated in second world war yeah uh, they are going to be served without the the queue right so they come and whenever they come uh, it's he's going to be the or she's going to be the first person who's going to be served by the bank bank manager all right so now let's look at some of the common methods in the uh, collection interface and then uh, look at the code so this uh, UML diagram here shows the, uh, the, the list of methods in collection interface. The collection interface is the father of all, is the root class for all collection classes. All of the collection classes have this method. So, uh, so these methods are like very basic uh, for all the collections. First, add at all. Um, these two methods add elements into the collection in add all we can see collection question mark extends e this question mark extends e means that into some collection that contains the elements of type e you can add any collection that contains elements of type e or subclasses of e okay question mark means any class we have a method called clear that removes all the elements contains contains all uh, checks whether some certain element or elements contain in, in in certain in this collection equals checks if uh, one collection is equal to the other hash code uh, we don't need this for now is empty returns if this collection is empty remove remove all removes elements from the collection retain all uh, keeps uh, elements in this collection that are also in collection C okay it's like intersection size returns the the number of elements and two array gives uh, returns the uh, array version of this collection uh, array you know it's a fixed size container also the collection interface is like sub interface of the iterable interface since uh, in a collection we can have uh, lots of elements we need to be able to traverse them using a for loop right so uh, we don't use collections just to store elements we also use collections to process elements so that's why we need to be able to uh, use a for loop to take all the elements of any collection one by one so collection inherits this uh, I mean collection interface inherits this iterable interface which has a single method called iterator iterator <coughs> is a special object you can think of iterator as a, 
as an object that uh, can control that can traverse or iterate the collection uh, very simply it's like um, it's like um, it's like an arrow yeah this element next element next element and so on and so forth so this iterator method in the iterable interface returns an iterator instance instance of iterator and iterator itself is an is actually an interface which contains three methods called has next next and remove has next gives true or false depending whether you are at the end of the collection or not uh, you can uh, put this has next into a while loop and then it's like scanners has next yeah and then we have the next method which gives whatever the next element the element is its return type is e uh, so if your collection contains strings its return type is going to be string as well remove removes the last element obtained uh, using the next method so if you call remove before calling next it's going to be in an exception there, there is going to be an exception you always call remove after you call next and you can't call remove on an empty collection because there are no elements to remove all right now let's look at some of the methods in the collection interface so this is the code so here we are creating a collection collection one we know that array list is a concrete subclass of the collection uh, interface it's like very basic uh, very basic collection without any uh, super superpowers okay you can add elements remove elements it's very dynamic and internally it just uses a simple array to store the elements so here we're adding some of the cities Almata, Shunkent, Bishkek, Kazlarda and then we're printing the elements in this collection so array list implements the string method that's why we can see its contents easily and then we can check using the contains method whether some element exists in this collection or not we can remove elements by their value and then we can get the number of elements in this collection size this is also an, a method from the collection interface and then we're printing it after removing Bishkek and we're creating collection number two uh, it contains some of the other cities but it contains like Almaty as well so both of the co collections contain Almaty we're printing uh, the cities in collection two and then we're cloning collection number one okay we're making uh, a copy of this clone makes a copy and it returns an object that's why we need to cast it into an array list of strings so that we can store it in an array list of strings and then we have the add all method it's a method also this method is also in collection interface which adds all the elements of collection 2 into this cloned collection basically it adds all the elements from this collection to this collection uh, and it doesn't add the repeating element for example it adds Astana it adds Moscow it adds Boston but it doesn't add Almaty because Almaty is already here it's very similar to union operation in sets in Venn diagram you know when you draw these two circles the union is going to be uh, the, the shaded area of both circles then we print this cloned collection then we clone again Okay, so collect clone collection is going to contain uh, these four cities right away. Retain all is like intersection. It means keep all elements in this collection, which are also in the second collection. So Almaty is in the second collection, so we keep it. Shemkent is not here, we, do, we remove it. Bishkek is not here, remove it. Khazlorda is not here, remove it. So we have only Almaty here. And the last method is remove all. It just means remove all elements from col clone collection that are in co collection number two. Almaty is here? Yes, remove it. Shemkent is here? No, keep it. Bishkek is actually al already removed. Xlorda is here? No, keep it. Okay? And remove all elements that are in the collection number two. So let's run this code. All right, so this is the result of our program. The list of cities in collection one. These are four cities. 
is, Mal is Almatin Collection 1. Yes, it's there. Uh, then we remove Bishkek and three cities are going to be uh, left in the collection number one. In collection two, we have Astana, Moscow, Basin, Almaty. Uh, the cities in both collections, this is the Union. You can see that... Oh! You can see that the Almaty actually is there. So, it actually doesn't... Uh, it actually adds uh, the duplicating elements. I, I'm sorry for the mistake. And we have the next one, collection one and collection two. This is the intersection of these two collections. And then uh, cities in collection one, but not in two. Shumkin and Khzalova. This is the last method call. All right, now let's look at iterators. Iterators are not as bad or as scary as they sound. They're actually very simple. So we know that iterators have only three methods. Has next, next, and remove. And so we're gonna be looking at all these three methods one by one. First of all, now let's do the has next. Uh, first of all, we need to create an iterator. Since our collection contains strings, it's made of, uh, it contains strings, so it, our iterator should be string iterator string uh, I also forgot to import and yeah it's an interface we can't write new iterator we need to use the method of the collection in order to get it we write collection dot iterator okay now we have this object let's just click and see what kind of methods it has it has next next and remove uh, also it has for each remaining which you can use uh, with uh, lambda expressions, but we're not gonna uh, look into this in this video. You can do it at home if you want. Uh, let's start with the has next one. So it returns a boolean system out println has iter has next. Let's run it. So initially, the iterator is going to be in the beginning of the of the collection. It's like it still has four elements to traverse. That's why the has next should return true. We can see that it returns true. Now um, let's write a loop using this has next and print the all the elements in this collection. So while uh, iter dot has next, what do we do? We need to get the next element, right? So it can't uh, if we don't move this iterator in this loop, it's going to be forever in the first initial position, and this loop is going to be an infinite loop. That's why we need to move this iterator at, so it reaches the end of the collection. So in order to move it, we use the next method. Also, this me next method returns the element. So first it returns Almat, Almat then Shumkent, then Bishkek, then Khzlorda. Then it doesn't have any next element, it just stops, okay? So we just get string city equals iter.next. And then we just display let's make all the letters uppercase like this all right let's run this and this is the result of our program we can see the list uh, all the cities are printed now how do we uh, remove using iterator how do we remove elements using iterator let's comment this code here Let's try to remove element before adding some elements into this collection. Sorry, I was trying to do, we need an iterator and then we do iter.remove. And let's uh, make so that our collection is empty. And we can see that we get an illegal state exception. And that's because uh, the remove method removes the the last element that was returned using the next method even if we add four elements into this collection and then try to remove using the iterator the iterator is like before almaty right so it's just at the beginning and it doesn't the next method was not called and when we run such code we're going to see a legal state exception because we didn't call the next method 
That's why in order to remove, for example, Shumkent with, uh, with iterator, we need to move the iterator twice. Almata. So it's gonna, it's now pointing to Almata. Uh, now uh, we go to next one. It's gonna point to Shumkent and return Almata. We do next, it's gonna point to Bishkek and point to Shumkent. The Shumkent was the previous element that we uh, that we call uh, re uh, that we got using the next method, and when we call uh, remove, it's going to remove the previous the, el the the element that previously was returned using the next. So in order to remove Shumkent, we need to call iter that next twice, and in order to see the contents of this collection, let's actually print it using just system print ln. And indeed, we can see that Shumkent is removed. The, one of the important things about the iterator is that you can move the iterator only forward. You can't move it backward. So uh, when you write, when you have one loop, so let me actually remove this part of code. When you have one code that iterates over the collection and then you write the same code using the same iterator, uh, this iterator, this iterator in this loop is going to reach the end and next time it's not going to enter this loop. Why? Because it already reached the end. So you can't move it to the beginning of the collection. In order to be able to move it to the beginning of the collection, we need to call this method once again. Uh, so let's try this code now. We can see that the cities are printed only once. Now let's try with this before running this loop. And now we can see that our cities are printed twice. So in order to uh, do the iteration from the beginning again, we need to call this iterator method once more. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for the iterators. Now let's look into the for each loop. So we know this for each loop from, our, uh, b from the beginning of the semester. We used it uh, in several places yeah uh, so we, we can use it for arrays we can use it for array lists and we can use for each loop for any collection so for each loop is written like this for each string city in in collection what do we do with the city we just do system out print ln city dot to uppercase Let's run it. And we can see that the cities are indeed printed. So this for each loop works uh, exactly like this one. So in the background, what's, what's happening is this for loop just takes the iter iterator of this collection and then uses, it, uses this iterator to iterate over this collection. So basically this for loop is actually uh, has this mechanism has this loop inside okay you can think of this as this so uh, when you need more control over what you want to do with the data like removing some of the elements you can use this uh, iterator and when you just simply need to iterate over the elements in the collection this method is going to save your time because you're going to write less code All right, let's continue. Now let's talk about lists. A list is an interface that extends the collection interface and it defines a collection for storing elements in a sequential order. Some of the classes that implement list, I mean two of the classes that implement the list interface are array list and linked list. So array list and linked list both have the same common methods you can see in this UML diagram. So uh, the list interface has the add method you can add an element into a certain position at the in the in the in the array list or a linked list and also you can add all the elements in some other collection to some certain position it returns a boolean um, probably uh, it returns true if the addition was successful uh, we need to check this in the documentation 
So it has the next method get, which gives uh, the element at some certain index. You can check the index of some certain element. So get and index of are kind of like reverse of each other or complement complement each other. Last index of gives you the index by looking from the right side. Index of looks from the left side and last index of looks from the right side. List iterator is a sub interface of the iterator interface. It's an it's a method. A list iterator is a method that gives a list iterator. And also you can get a list iterator starting from some other index. We're going to look at list iterator shortly. Uh, remove is a method that removes some certain element, some certain position. And set is a method that changes an element at some, at some certain index. And sublist returns a list containing the same type of elements uh, between these two indices. The from index is included and to index is not included, as you can see uh, in, the, in the description of the method. Now let's look at the iterator, uh, list iterator interface. So list iterator is the sub interface of iterator and it has some additional methods like, um, like add. It adds the specified element into the list, has previous, tells you whether there is a previous element. Uh, next index gives you the, the index of the next element. Previous gives you the previous element. Previous index gives you the previous index and set replaces the last element returned by the previous or next method with the specified element. So here we don't have the next, next method. Actually, it's in the iterator interface, which is the super interface of list iterator. Also, we don't have remove, which is also in the iterator interface, and has next is also in the iterator interface. So this list iterator has some additional methods. Uh, now let's talk about the array list and linked list classes and their differences. As you can see in this image, um, both of the uh, we can see like the data, five numbers, 23, 3, 17, 9, and 42. Uh, both of them are stored in sequential order. In the upper part, we can see that the elements are indexed. This is the, uh, this is how array list looks like. So all the elements in an array list have indices. Array list internally uses uh, simple arrays. We actually implemented uh, array lists in one of our previous lectures. Uh, array list is simply a dynamic array. Uh, initially, it contains the fixed size of, of elements, and when this array gets full, you like double this container, double this array in size, and then add more elements. Each time you need more space, you just double the initial. Uh, internal container. And linked lists, as you can see the, from these arrows, uh, these arrows you can think of them as links. Link is something that connects two elements. So we can see uh, a link that goes to the right and link go that goes to the left. So the one that goes to the right is actually a reference uh, to the next element. Yeah, you can call this a next and uh, arrow to the left is actually like previous, yeah, previous element. So each element in this linked list only knows what is the element on the right side and on the left side, or what's the next element or what's the previous element. So these two data structures, array list and linked list, uh, store the same uh, data, but in different ways, right? And they have uh, when it comes to doing some certain operations, uh, they, bo they both behave differently. So some of the operations you can do with array lists and linked lists. We're going to be looking at each, each of them one by one. When you get an element from an array list, since all the elements are indexed, it takes constant time, right? So you can get any element from an array list using constant time.
in constant time. But in linked list, since you don't know uh, the index of the element, you need to go up until that element by using that links. So if the element you want to get the zeroth element, it's going to take I mean uh, one operation. But if you want to get the last element, it's going to take n n operations. So the complexity of getting the element at some certain index is O of n for a linked list. So getting element at some certain position is uh, more efficient in array lists. And when it comes to adding elements into array lists and linked lists, adding element to the end of the array list is um, it takes uh, constant time because you just add it into the array. But adding element in, into the beginning of the array list takes a linear time. Why? Because you need to shift all the elements in all the existing elements in the array list by one position to the right, and then you put your element into zero position. So this uh, adding elements into an array list to some certain index takes linear time. But when you want to add elements into the linked list, and uh, if you want to add it into somewhere, some place in the middle, it's just going to take on average n over 2 time, uh, n over 2, because uh, you can go either from the left side or from the right side, and the furthest you go is going to be the half, so on average it's going to be n over 2. If you want to add elements into beginning or end of the linked list, it's going to take constant time. So when you, in your program, you do lots of insertions into beginning or ending of the list, it's more efficient to use linked list. When it comes to removing elements from array list or linked list, it also depends from the index. Uh, removing the zeroth element in an array list means you need to shift all the elements uh, by one position to the left. And removing the last element in the array list is constant. Removing first and last elements in the linked list is it takes constant time operation. Uh, that's why removing and adding are both more efficient in linked list when you do it at the beginning or, or the end of the, of the lists. So considering these cases, you choose the, the data structure that is uh, more suitable for you. So when you need to support random access through an index without inserting or removing elements at the beginning of the list, uh, so array list is going to be most efficient. But if in your application you need to insert or delete elements at the beginning or at the end of the list, uh, it's better to use linked list. Now let's look at the code uh, where we may uh, like programmatically check the difference between adding and removing elements to the beginning and to the end of the array list and linked list and also accessing random elements at random indices in both array list and linked list. Let's see the difference. So before we see the difference, let's first analyze the code. So we have these two variables start and end, uh, which, we're, which we're gonna use just to mark the time. We're gonna mark the time with system current time millis. It returns a number of milliseconds from some certain time. Yeah? And then we do some operation, and then we mark the time again. And the difference between these two variables is gonna be the amount of time it took to do this operation in milliseconds. That's the logic which we're, which we're going to use. This n here denotes um, the uh, iter number of iterations that's going to happen. And we have two lists. First is array list, and then we have linked list of integers. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to store integers there. All right. So first, th first code here is going to check how long does it take to add elements to the end of the lists, to the end of the array list and linked list. So we mark the time, start and end, and then we write a loop that repeats n times, and then we add elements to the array list. Add element by default is going to add the elements to the end of the array list. And then we're going to print array list, add n elements to the end, and how many milliseconds it took. The same we do with the linked list, but in linked list we don't use the add method, we use add last to add the element to the 
uh, end of the linked list. Then we have um, part of the code that's going to do at first. So again, we mark the time and to add an element to the beginning of the array list, we use the add method where we specify the index. So in this case, we always add to the zeros position. It's going to add to the first element. And in the linked list, we're going to call the method add first. All right, so now remember, when we add the elements to the end of the array list, we just append it. I mean, we just add it, and if we need more space, we're going to double the size of the array list. If we add the elements to the end of the linked list, we just create one node and the links between them. So it's like constant time, op time operation, but sometimes for array list, it's going to take some time to actually grow the, the array inside that array list. So in both cases, they're going to be roughly the same. But when we do the add first one, when we add the elements to the, uh, to the beginning of the array list, we have to shift all n elements by one position to the right. But in linked list, we just need to put a node and then just establish the links between them. That's why for the linked list, it's going to take constant time. But for array list, it's going to take a linear time. So uh, when we repeat loop n times, it's going to be like add itself is a linear. This is also linear. It's going to be quadratic time. So adding a first to the, to the beginning of the array list is very, very inefficient when, uh, with, with respect to the linked list. So when you, we, we will see here, probably, uh, we hope to see that linked list is going to behave more efficiently in this part. Now we're going to do remove first. Remove first, when we do it with array list, we just remove the element at some certain index, remove zero. But for a linked list, we just call the method called remove first. Again, when we remove first element from the array list, we need to shift all the remaining elements by one position to the left because the first spot in the array is empty. So that's why we shift the elements. And when we remove first in linked list, we just need to break the links between the first and second elements and make the first element as the head of the linked list. I mean, the second element as the head of the linked list, that's it. So this is kind of like constant time operation. So for a linked list, removing first element is very efficient, but for array list, it's very inefficient. Remove last. In both cases, for both array list and linked list, uh, they should be roughly the same because uh, for array list, there is no shifting happening. Uh, so it's like constant time operation. And for a linked list, we just need to remove the links between the last element and the uh, previous to last element. And, the, and lastly, we're going to do random index access. In this case, so first we fill the elements because we have emptied our both of, the, both of our lists. We fill the, them with numbers. And then uh, we're going to, so they, they, they are going to contain n, n numbers. And then we have a loop that repeats n times. And in this loop, what we're going to do for array list, we're going to get some random index. So get is a method that gives, this is actually a method from the list interface that gives you an act, gives you the value of the element at ith position. So here we, to make it fair, we're going to access at random positions. So here we generate a random number between 0 and 1. We multiply it by the size of the array. It's going to be between 0 and n. But since this is double, we need to convert it into an, in, into an integer. And that's and then we just store it into some uh, variable j. The same do we do with the linked list. We just it's like uh, since this this is the common method, there is no change except these uh, variable reference parts. So here, since uh, linked lists and array lists use different way to store the elements, array list is gonna perform much better because it has indices for each element. But in linked list, in order to get to the ith element, we need to uh, uh, have a loop i times, right? Because we're going to start either from the beginning or from the end, and we need to travel to the ith position. And it's going to take i steps. 
in in the worst case it's gonna probably be n over 2 because you can go either I mean the furthest from both ends you can go from both ends yeah and the furthest you can go is right in the middle of the linked list that's why it's gonna be an average n over 2 and linked list should perform poorly here so let's run this program and see the results all right we already can see the results for adding elements to the end both of them are roughly the same you know, these numbers are going to be different each time because operating system is going to allocate the resources differently at each moment in time adding elements to the beginning is much much bigger for array list like 16 seconds against 125 milliseconds removing from the beginning is also look is very big number for array lists and um, removing from the end is roughly the same is roughly the same and random access of elements is 97 milliseconds for array list and for linked list where we are still waiting imagine uh, writing in uh, writing a program where you randomly access elements and you use linked list it's your program is going to be very very slow and inefficient 32 seconds it's it's a very very inefficient way to access elements at random positions all right i hope this example gave you clear understanding between in uh, between uh, a clear understanding of the difference between a real list and linked list when it comes to adding and removing elements at from the beginning and to the end uh, to the beginning and to the end and uh, randomly accessing elements at some certain positions let's talk about comparators uh, so uh, if you look at this image um, you can see lots of kids standing up and a teacher on the right side uh, looking at them right so this is in physical education lesson at at a normal school at an ordinary school so usually in this kind of lessons uh, students line up by their height right so the shortest student is going to be on the right side and the tallest student is going to be on the left side and all of them are going to be sorted by their height so assume that this uh, the kids are the kids are very I mean they are studying in 11th grade or 10th grade they are already like uh, uh, like adults yeah maybe teens and when teacher tells them to line up by their height what's gonna happen they're gonna look at each other and they're gonna compare each other's heights and then uh, become sorted so if you see that on the, on your left side there is a taller person you're gonna swap with that person and uh, each student is going to just repeat this step right so if a student sees on the left side a taller student they're going to swap if a student sees a shorter student on the right side they're going to swap and this way using the simple algorithm they're going to be able to line up uh, by their heights and now uh, so this situation is when these students know how to compare each other to each other so each student knows how to compare himself or herself to other student so this is an example of comparable interface because a comparable is ability of an, of an instance of a class to be able to compare itself to an instance of the same class usually the same class uh, yeah to be able to compare itself right and now let's uh, give let me give an example of comparator assume that the same teacher the same but the different students this time it's like very the first day of first year kids okay they are like six or seven years old and they don't know anything and this is their first physical education class and instead of for example teacher to explain them I, I'm actually giving uh, an example which probably might not work in real world but just assume that the kids don't know 
they're very small or maybe kindergarten okay they don't know how to like compare each other's heights themselves so what does teacher do teacher looks at two students and then if a student on the left side is shorter than students on the right side the teacher is going to swap them okay so in this case teacher is going to be the person who decides which student is bigger or, i mean which kid is taller or shorter this is an example of comparator comparator is an external object which is able to compare uh, some other objects of some type okay so i hope now this makes sense to you now let's look at the code and this is an example of a code where i use comparators so basically i have a list of uh, strings so i created a list of strings it's called cities and it's going to be linked list so you can use this um, so this is like the super type of the li linked list that's why you can store a linked list in that no problem here but this cities is going to be internally is going to be using a linked list okay so if you uh, as we previously discussed if you try to access at random indices in the cities it's going to be very i mean slower than if you used array list but for small lists like that contain only seven elements there is not much difference so yeah let's just use linked list here so we're we added like seven cities in kazakhstan i'm not sure about Tirekte, but it might, it, might, it might not be a big city, but uh, certainly I've heard somewhere that we have some place like this. And then uh, we print the unsorted, uh, I mean, initial, uh, this, this list in initial order. So you know that linked list, it, it stores the elements in sequential order. That's why when you add Taraz before Shimkent, it's always going to appear before Shimkent, for example the order of the elements is going to be in the same order as you add the elements that's why when we see the cities at this point we're going to see in the same order and then uh, what if we want to sort this list in some different ways for example we can sort these strings by their length oral contains four letters taras contains five letters right Astana contains six letters. So why don't we compare by the number of letters in a, in a string? So if we compare alphabetically, of course, Astana, Astana is going to be first. Astana is going to be first. This is like the natural ordering of strings. Natural ordering means how do you compare some certain elements naturally? So that usually comes with the comparable interface. So strings already implement the comparable interface and naturally they are sorted by alphabetically. And if we want, uh, we can also sort strings in some different ways. That was uh, what I was going to tell you. So we can sort them by length. So how do you sort them by length? Uh, writing, you can write an, a sorting algorithm from scratch, but not, that's not the best case, best solution because um, each time you will need to sort this, uh, you will need to write a separate method or you will need to uh, write the algorithm again and again instead of using an existing sort method in the collections class. We're going to talk about the sort method shortly. Alright, so how, uh, how to sort these elements by the, by, by the number of letters in them? In this case, we're going to use comparator. A uh, comparator is going to be an external object which is going to be able to sort two elements by their length. And that's, what, that's what's going to happen here. So, comparator is an interface and we need, um, we need a class that implements this interface. And this class is going to have to implement one abstract method in this interface, which is compare. So, compare takes... Uh, takes two strings right and then compares them if o1 object 1 is bigger than object 2 in this case we compare their lengths then we return positive number we can return 1 in this case if the length of the first object is less than the length of the second object in the, the second string we return minus 1 and in if both of the cases are false it means they're equal length and we just return 0 because we consider them equal if they contain the same number of letters. 
and then how do we sort them? The collections class has a wonderful method called sort, which accepts a list and then an, a comparator. We just send an instance of this comparator into that sort method. And that uh, list is going to be sorted by length. After that, we can also sort these lists in some other different ways. Just try to fantasize and see if you can um, make up some order. So I came up with sorting alphabetically but in reverse order. For example, I, we're, we're going to look at the last letter first. Yeah? For example, A is the first one. And then if they are same, we're going to look at N and D. So in this case, Xlorda is going to be smaller than Astana. Alphabetically, we're going to look from the right to left of the word. Okay, so alphabetic from the end of the word. And I call this comparator reverse alphabetic comparator. So how does this reverse alphabetic comparator work? So this comparator is going to take two strings and then reverse them. So we can reverse strings using the string builder, string builder classes method called reverse. We convert both of the strings into string builders and then call this method and then make uh, these strings again. O1 and O2 are going to be like the reverse tr strings. And then we compare both of these strings using compare to ignore case. Uh, this is actually a method of the string class. And we don't have to write alphabetic ordering in this case. We just can call that method. And then we pass that reverse alphabetic comparator into the sort method. Let's see the result of this program. Yeah, this is the result. So this is our initial ordering. Sorted by length, you can see all of the cities have a different number of letters on purpose. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and, and 11. And here we sort them alphabetically from the end of the word. This is ad roll, right? Which is less than ana, which is less than itk, which is l, n, t, z. Okay, so this is uh, sorted that way. So using this logic, you can create as many comparators as you want. And you can sort your list in many different ways you want. Uh, everything just... Um, depends on your imagination and your needs. Now let's talk about vectors. Vectors are very similar to array lists. And um, both of them have uh, had different methods initially, but in Java version number two, uh, developers introduced Java collections framework and uh, like joint vector and array list into one uh, framework, right? Which we saw in the, at the beginning of this video lecture. So what is similar between array list and vector? Well, they are similar because they store the elements in the same fashion. They store the elements in an, in an array internally. And if this array gets full, they, they like grow it. Uh, by some factor and and so on and so forth. Both of them have the same uh, complexity for different operations. The difference comes in that uh, vectors methods are synchronized. So we're going to talk about synchronization in, uh, in our later uh, videos. Synchronization allows multiple threads accessing the one vector to not corrupt or to not change the data in the vector in a way that you don't want, okay? So vectors are safe when it comes to multi-threading, but array lists are not synchronized. That's why they are not safe. The data in array list can be corrupted when you use it in a multi-threaded program and multiple threads access your array list. So this is the only difference between vectors and array lists. In most of the cases, when you write um, non-multi-threaded programs, you're going to use array lists because they're going to be a little bit uh, faster because they are not synchronized. Synchronization takes a little bit of overhead. If we look at the methods of the vector, well, uh, all of them can be understood by their names. But since a vector was not initially 
in the Java Collections framework, some of the methods in vector class are different than the methods in the Collections framework. For example, add element. It's the uh, it's uh, this method is not in the Collections framework. In Collections framework, its name is add. Add element was vector's initial method name. This is uh, one of the examples. All right, now it's time to talk about uh, stacks. So stacks are in Java util package, as you can see here. I'm gonna just give an example of using stacks. So assume that you are moving from your dormitory to your house due, the, due to this coronavirus. So you need to take all of your books and put them into a box and then take them with you to your house, to your home, and then take out the books from the box and then put them into the shelf, okay? So what's the algorithm? Put the books, put the books uh, from the shelf in your room, in dormitory, put the books into the box one by one and take them home take out the books from the box one by one and put the books to your shelf at home one by one okay so this is the algorithm. So uh, the constraint is that the size of the box is equal to the size of the book. Or I mean, you can't put two books on. I mean, uh, close. I mean, the books should be on top of each other. Okay, the books should be on top of each other. So this is a. This is gonna be the box is gonna be like stack. Okay, because you can put the books only from top, and you can put the take the books only from top. So if the book is at the bottom of the box, you need to take out all of the books in order to get it. All right, so uh, let's say that the shelf is gonna be some list, a list of strings, list of strings, shelf equals new, uh, let's say it's gonna be array list. And then on the shelf we have uh, the book calculus, okay? And then we have uh, linear algebra. Then we have um, differential equations. And then we have programming. Four books on your shelf. We're gonna write a loop Actually, let's write a, an index list for each loop. For each string book on your shelf, what you do with this book? You put it into to the box, right? My books that push. You push the book into the stack. Then you do transfer and then uh, let's actually system out print on here. Putting book into the box okay then system out print ln going home then we have the same loop and this time it's gonna be while um, stack my books sorry my books dot size is bigger than zero what do we do uh, the, in other way, this is going to sound like while my box is not empty. Yeah? We're going to take out the book. Take out. Now we need to see what's the topmost book, right? So we're going to say my books dot peak. This is going to just it's just like it's just like looking okay without taking it out. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, what do we do in, uh, in 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 real life? What uh, we do my books dot pop. Okay, pop it just removes. Actually, we could t we could write here pop. It would print and remove at the same time, but uh, there is actually no difference here. And at the end, we just write done uh, book transfer. Let's run this program. All right, so here you can see. Putting calculus into the box, it's going to be the first book, then linear algebra, then differential equations and programming. Then you go home, then you take out the books, right? Pop and or pick, doesn't matter. Taking out programming is going to be the first one. And then you take out differential equations and then you take out linear algebra and then you take out calculus and then it's done. Okay. All right. I hope this uh, example uh, made it clear on how stacks work. Now let's talk about queues, and decks, and linked lists, and uh, like a relationship between them. Queue is a data structure uh, with first in, first out uh, principle. So the first element you put into the queue is going to be the first element you take out of the queue. It's just like the same example as, you, as I gave you at the beginning of this video lecture about the line at the uh, dining hall uh, at lunch, for example. So uh, what are some of the methods in Q? So offer is a method that puts an element into the Q. Paul re uh, retrieves, gives you the element and removes it. Uh, the head of the Q. The head of the Q is going to be the, is the first element that's uh, that's going to be out. So if uh, the the queue is empty, it's going to return null. Remove removes the the head, returns it, and throws an exception if the queue is empty. So pull and remove are different only in uh, when it comes to throwing exceptions or returning null when the queue is empty. Pick and ele element are both kind of like the same. They don't remove the element, they both, they, both, they both retrieve, but pick returns null if the uh, if the queue is empty and element throws an exception if the queue is empty. So since this class is very simple, I, 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 I thought about not giving you an example uh, for this particular class. Uh, just let me know if you need help with this queue class. So next class is deck. Deck sounds like um, something scary, but uh, it's not. It's not scary. Deck is a double-ended queue. A double-ended queue means uh, you can uh, put elements and take elements from the beginning and end end of the queue. It's like from both sides. So um, it's very similar to the queue, uh, but queue only takes elements from the head but the double-ended queue can take elements from the both sides there are no there, there are no classes concrete classes for queue and deck if you look at the uh, the class relationship diagram of the java collections framework you can see that there are no concrete classes for queue and deck why that's because that's because the linked list class actually already has the capability to simulate the queue or double-ended queue. Linked list has methods like uh, adding elements to the beginning and removing elements from the beginning, adding elements to the end and removing elements to the end, from the end, and these four methods are enough to simulate the queue. So in fact the queue is an interface and linked list, inter uh, linked list class implements this interface it means it already has the offer method, poll method, remove, peak, and element methods. DEC is also an interface. Which has these methods called add first, remove first, add last, remove last, get first, get last, which linked list implements. So you can use link linked list class in order to simulate this double add the queues. All right, now let's talk about priority queue uh, uh, priority queues. This is the last th thing for today's 
video lecture. So here we have, um, I'm going to create a class person and then we're going to be working with this person class to understand priority queues. So priority queues, as I told you guys earlier, is a class where the elements are located in a queue, but uh, they are not served in first come first serve basis. So assuming that you are sitting in a bank office and you want to and you are waiting for your line to come and at some point there's some uh, veteran that participated in, in uh, Second World War comes in. These people in Kazakhstan are served uh, without waiting on any line. When this person comes, this veteran, old person, this person is going to be the it's, he, he's not going to wait in the line, so he's going to have more priority. So we're going to simulate this. So first of all, uh, we're going to finish writing this person class. Uh, so we have a uh, person has a name and an age. Let's include a constructor for both of the data fields. And let's um, include getters and setters for both of the... Um, data fields and then let's include the to string method that is going to print the contents of this object by showing its name and age so person class is ready now let's create several people so we're going to create person all right so these people are going to be served by their ages so this is a special bank where older people are served first we're gonna make these people's ages different. Or let's say Rahamjan is an old person, 80, and Aliya is also an old lady, 70 years old. Quat is very young, he is like, I don't know, 18 years old. And Slushash is, let's say, uh, 40 years old. All right, so these are four people. Now we're gonna add them into the priority queue. We're gonna create a priority queue that contains all these people. Uh, this is going to be Q equals new priority Q. So if we look at the constructor here, we can see that we can create these priority queues in many, many different ways. We use the first constructor where the elements are ordered using their natural ordering. Natural ordering means that they are required to implement the comparable interface. We also can create these priority queues by using comparators. So this comparator is going to be used in order to distinguish which of the uh, elements in this queue should be served before, right? So let's try to add some elements into this queue. Offer P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. All five people. And this time we we are using the natural ordering. Now let's uh, try to print the contents of this queue. And then here we're going to be serving. while this queue is empty is not empty what we're gonna do so we need to remove um, the the element from this queue and print it let's let's see the result so this is the result of our uh, program. We have a class cost exception happening. So it's saying that we can't cost a person to comparable, right? So the natural ordering of the elements assumes that the class implements the comparable interface. But our person class doesn't implement the comparable interface. So we can implement the comparable interface in which we compare people by their ages, right? But uh, I don't think that this is the natural way to do it because um, 
people, person, uh, why do we need to implement a comparable interface only for the queue here, right? So if we create some other queue where the priority is in different order, so are we going to change the comparable? Probably not. That's when we are going to uh, create the comparator interface, uh, the instance of the comparator in interface. So now let's create this queue by using the comparator interface. We're going to say new comparator person. It's going to be anonymous interface. Let's try to do it. So we need to uh, now implement the compare method in this anonymous interface. How do we compare two people? So we need to compare them by their ages. All right, so this is the result. Here the serving order is uh, in, a, in a reverse order, right? So it actually uh, pre, uh, takes out the, the smallest element in the, in the queue. So I forgot to, uh, I forgot about that. So we need to change it. So if the person first uh, age is bigger than the second age, in this case, uh, it has the lower priority here, it has the higher priority. Now let's run again. So this is the result. So the smallest element is going to be this is going to be served first. The smallest element in uh, that's found that was found by using this comparator. So the smallest one should be the one with the greatest age. So uh, 80, 70, 40, 20 and 18. This is the order of people uh, that are served. So I hope this, vi uh, this uh, example gave you a clear understanding of priority queues. Uh, now, uh, let's wrap it up. I hope uh, you learned something in uh, this video lecture. Today we're, we talked about lists, stacks, queues and priority queues. We explored the relationship between interfaces and classes. Uh, what is the Java Collections framework? We tried to understand it. We looked at some of the basic and common methods of collection interface. We also looked at what iterator is and how to traverse elements using iterator and how to use for each loop in an iterator. I mean, uh, how to use uh, for each loop for a list. We looked at the differences between ArrayList and linked list classes. We looked at differences between comparable and comparator interface, and we wrote a really fun, a really fun example where we compared strings. Then we looked at uh, vectors, ArrayLists, and stacks. Then we talked about queues, decks, and linked lists, and we wrote one example using priority queue. Now. The homework for this video lecture is this. So you will need to make a video uh, where you explain some of the concepts in this chapter. The requirements for the video are this. The minimum uh, duration for the video should be 5 minutes. So you can create a video at least five minutes, but let's say no longer than 10 minutes as well, between five and 10 minutes. Also, you will need to show your face. I, I, will, I, I want to see your face, uh, so I can see you're talking in the video, just like me in the lower right part of the video. Also, make sure that you use uh, proper place to record your video, so, it can, so your voice can be heard uh, easily. So what you need to explain. So this chapter contains uh, like uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. These are the sub chapters in this big chapter. So the numbers are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You will need to find uh, your ID modulus 8 plus 2 and the number you get is going to be the subchapter you will need to explain. I'm going to give a, an activity point for the homework 
and uh, for the attendance. But if you find this homework to be very difficult, I can just give you a point for the attendance in portal. So in this case, if you want to get your attendance point, you just need to send me an email where you say, I just want to get an attendance point. And after you send me your homeworks, your videos, I'm gonna upload them to my YouTube channel where you can see other students' homeworks as well. Thank you very much for your attention. See you guys in the next video.